I have no idea what consultations are taking place. Um, the only thing I think that would be at this point is to confirm with the defendant that she has access to her discovery materials should she want them. I think they've been brought over here at the court's request and that she has access to them. But I think in light of yesterday's events, it, it may be useful to confirm all of those facts today outside the presence of the jury just for the record as, as we go forward. Well, I would agree with all of your assessments about uh, your observations of the defendant and her behavior. She seems actively engaged, attentive to the proceedings, seems involved in what it is that's going on. You do have your notepad and your pen, Ms. Moss. Is there anything that you need that you don't have? Do you have access to all the materials that you require? I have access Okay. Is there anything that you need or that I can help accommodate you with? Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Anything else you want on the record, Mr. Not, Porter? Not, not from the stage. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, given what Mr. Porter just, has just said, we actually prepared a motion that I'm going to file uh, to address this issue. Uh, we do not believe that she is participating uh, for the reasons we stated before um, as it relates to why we believe she shouldn't have been allowed to represent herself. So we spelled it out in the motion. I'm going to file it, um, and I'll bring the copies up for the court um, to address at some point in time. Her files are still uh, in the locker room. I think she's not accessed those files in over a year. Um, so they're here, but they haven't been accessed. And so since we're placing that on the record, we think the record should fully reflect what's happening. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I would just reiterate that the observations that Mr. Porter outlined on the record here are the same observations that I've made. She is present. She is alert. She's paying attention to what's going on. She's been polite and responsive in every occasion that I've had the opportunity to address her. She's looking at the witnesses as they testify. Um, she's been polite and respectful and responsive in appropriate ways on all occasions. And, while I certainly understand that you disagree with certain decisions that she might be making and would prefer to litigate the case in a different way, these are nonetheless her choices to make. Anything else? In response to Mr. Gardner, um, in reviewing the media from last night, it is clear that the media has had access to this motion that he, re that he refers to. That motion refers to brain damage and frontal lobe injury and frontal lobe decisions. And of course, the state's position is that's not evidence. That's merely claims and that um, they have no standing to raise this issue in light of the rulings of the court and, and, the, rule, and the observations of both the state and the court in regard to this matter. They are standby counsel who are not in a position to intervene, particularly by filing a motion that makes factual assertions that have not been proven in court and no evidence has been presented. Well, at this point, no motion has been presented. Anything you wanted to say in response to that? Yes, sir? Your Honor. Um, we looked at the media reports also. I believe there's an 11 Alive uh, news story. And from my observation, it looked like they were responding to a motion filed uh, by the district attorney's office. Uh, we also filed the motion for uh, interim review that did reference uh, what we believe to be the brain damage, and that was filed back in 2018. So that has been a part of the record um, for almost a year now. All right. Very good. Thank you so very much. Stay ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jones will handle this matter. I, if, with the court's permission, I'm going to step to the back area, and then I'll return um, after the witness, and then we'll... We have one witness that we were we were dragging in this morning, so uh, uh, we're going to put that witness up very quickly and then move to the schedule that I explained to the court yesterday. So you have one witness before we get to somebody in the back. Correct. All right. And very good. if I could be excused to step back with the deputies to, uh, and talk to that. You're welcome to do that. Ms. Moss, are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Sure, with regard to this witness, um, he had a work conflict yesterday, and that's why he's here this morning. 
He has requested, he's very nervous about the cameras. I'm not sure, but he has requested that his face not appear on, on camera. I'm not sure if that is an option. I told him that I would make the request. Um, he had no problem with audio um, of his testimony. I'm not sure if that can be accommodated or not, Your Honor, but I did indicate I would make the request. I certainly appreciate you making the request, but this is a public forum, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. I'm, thank, thank you. Thank you so very much. Please bring our jury. Do you need the video equipment for this first question? I do not, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It's good to see you this morning. We are ready to continue with the trial of the case. Ms. Jones, call your next witness. Thank you, Robert. This time the state calls Terrell Bethea. the testimony you're about to give this court today in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Tiffany Moss will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. All right, put your hand down. If you could please state your name for the court and for the jury, please. Oh, Terrell Bethea. Mr. Bethea, um, I think you currently live at Miranda Chase, is that right? Yes. Okay, tell me where you lived in um, October of 2013. Oh, uh, Miranda Chase. I mean, um, I don't know the address, but it's on Miranda Chase. Next door. It's, it's my house in it was next door. Is yes. that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, you um, you said you don't remember the exact apartment number. Um, if I told you that they lived at 1131 Veranda Chase Drive, would that be in the same area then? Yes, it might have to be 1132 then. Would you just scoot up a little closer to the microphone there? Thank you, sir. And Mr. Bethea, um, when did you move into that ver ver your Veranda Chase apartment? October, the end of October 2014. 2013 or 2014? 13, I'm sorry. That's all right, sir. Um, I know you, and as you said, you moved to different apartments, but you still live with the same apartment complex. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Now, when you lived there um, in October of 2013, did you 
occasion to meet, and I said, you, you said Miss Moss. Did you ever have occasion to meet either Miss Tiffany Moss or Mr. Amon Moss that lived next door to you? I spoke to him coming from in and out of the house going to work. <clears throat> And where were you working at that time, Mr. Bethay? In Swanee. Can you say that uh, place again, just for the court reporter so she can get that? NFI. Interfire? NFI. NFI, I apologize. Yes, sir. When you um, would see um, Mr. Moss or Miss Moss, where would that typically be? Outside of the complex, in the parking lot. Did you ever observe whether or not they had any children? Yeah, I've seen kids. Can you tell me, um, when you say kids, how many kids? Uh, I've seen an uh, older girl and two little ones. You indicated that you lived next door to them. Do you, um, can you kind of describe maybe for the jury? not connected. Do you know what I'm saying? Was there a wall that you were on one side of it and the Moss's apartment were on, were right. on the other side? Correct. Okay. You, um, knowing the layout of those apartments, could you ever, um, would you ever be in an area of your apartment where you ever heard anything next door? In, in the computer room. And that was your computer room? Yes. Game room. So I see. You had it set up as a game room? Okay. Right. And what, if anything, could you ever hear? Uh, I hear, like, running, you know, screams every now and again. <clears throat> Was it ever such that it caused you to go and knock on the door or anything of that nature? No. Do you ever remember any real specific conversations that, and I don't want you to tell me what they were, but did you ever have a chance to actually speak with um, Mr. Amon Moss or have conversation with the defendant Tiffany Moss at any time, if you recall? No, I just speak like good morning or something like that. Simple pleasantries with right. what you exchanged? Yes. <clears throat> and the one time that you saw, you said the little girl, um, were you able to... Um, I said, you, you said smaller kids, so the little girl that you saw, um, was she around the same age as the smaller kids, or was she older? And she was much taller than the other kids. And similar to what I asked you with Mr. and Mrs. Moss, did you ever um, have a conversation with the little girl on that, no. on that one time? Did you speak to her? In the one day um, in October that you did see her, um, was that the only time you said you saw her? Yes. And in regard to this case, after um, after the Amani, the little girl, I know you didn't know her name, um, after she died, did you in fact um, speak with police officers about any observations or the things that you've testified here today about? Uh, they came not on the door. Okay. And did you speak to them that day? Yes, I spoke to some man. Okay. So, uh, Detective Flynn, possibly? Probably so. All right. Today, those are all the questions I have for you, sir. Thank you. Cross examination. No question, Your Honor. May this witness be excused. Yes, Your Honor. You may be excused. Thank you. You're excused, sir. Thank you for coming. <coughs> call your next witness. Your Honor, the state will call in my boss to the stand. show this defendant some photographs. Is it possible to unshackle one one of his hands? Thank 
Thank you. Could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter now pending shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. All right. Can you scoot your chair up a little bit? And you can put your hand down and speak directly into the microphone so the jury and and the judge and the reporter can hear you clearly. Um, could you state your name, please? Iman Giovanni Moss. Um, and can you spell both your first and your middle name for the court reporter? Um, first name Iman E M A N. Um, middle name is Giovanni G I O V A N N I. And how how old are you, Mr. Moss? Thirty five of age. Right. How long? Where do you currently reside? Um, Smith State Prison. Right. And are you currently serving a sentence at Smith State? Yes, sir. What sentence are you currently serving? Uh, life without. Life without what? Bro. Right. Life without parole. Right. And is that in? Is that because of a, of a guilty plea that you entered in regard to the case you're in court here today on? Yes, sir. And what did you plead guilty to? Um, formula, child cruelty, and considering the death. All right. And who was the victim in those cases? Uh, my daughter, uh, Imani Gabrielle Moss. And do you remember when you actually took that, when you actually entered that plea of guilty? Uh, I'm not familiar with the, I know it was in the month of August 2015. I know that much. I can't remember the day. That's close enough. And so since August of 2015, you've been serving the sentence on that case? Yes, sir. Do you know, I'm going to show you what I've had marked as state's exhibit number three. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, sir. Can you take a look at that? And in particular, this document here. And can you identify state's exhibit number three to the best of your ability? Uh, you said three? Talk about the count? No, it's uh. state's exhibit number three, but can you tell us, do you, do you recognize that document? Yes, I recognize the document. Right. And can you tell the jury what that document is? Uh, a little bit, I'm trying to... You're talking about the indictment itself? Or? The, the indictment, and did you sign a copy of that indictment entering your plea of guilty? Yes. And then let me flip over to the first page of that document. Do you recognize this as the sentence that you received? Yes. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the state... I'm sorry, I'll show you. Your Honor, having shown the document to the defendant, the state would now tender state's exhibit number three, which is a certified copy of the indictment, plea, and sentence, a certified copy of those in case number 14B00384-10. Any objection? Any objection? He's tendering it. All right. State's three is admitted without objection. Mr. Moss, do you know the defendant in this case? Yes. Tiffany, and what is her name? Tiffany Nicole Moss. Um, do you see her in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point her out? Yes, she's right there. All right. Can you, right just, just for the record, can you describe um, what she's wearing? Um, I guess a pants, uh, button-up shirt uh, with stripes. Your Honor, for the record, it, the defendant, uh, the witness has identified the defendant, Tiffany Nicole Moss, by describing her clothing and pointing her out in front of the jury. How do you know Tiffany Moss? Um, she's my wife. Are you currently married? Um, yes. Um, when did y'all meet? Um, we met, let's say, around, when I first met her, I want to say around 2007. Okay. At the church. Which church was that? Um, Freedom Christian Church. Were you attending that church? Yes. 
Um, with who did you? Who did you usually go to church with? Um, me and my daughter. Right. Who's your daughter? Um, Imani. Um, and how did you meet? How did you meet the defendant? Um, I met her through a friend that knew uh, that knew her. All right. Um, did y'all strike up a friendship? Uh, at that time, it was, yeah, it was just like you know casual. Okay. At that time, because uh, I just met him like friends, we would go out to eat and so on. Okay. As a gr uh, group at the church. For about how long did that casual relationship last? Um, it was uh, more, more like an acquaintance than you know she was off and on. Mm -hmm. I think she was in school at that time. Right. Let me, ask, let me go back and ask you a little bit about Imani. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm getting a little bit out of order. But tell, uh, can you tell me when Imani was born? Yes. She was born April 23rd, uh, 2003. And did you at that time have a relationship with Imani's mother? Yes. Um, where is Imani's mother now? Do you know? Honestly, I do not know. Um, at some point, did you go to court and get sole custody of? Yes, sir. Of Amani. Yeah. Did you have a document that terminated the parental rights of Amani's mother? Yes, I had a legitimate uh, thing. Legitimate mice through this. I know through the court. I just can't even pronounce it right now. Okay. Say the legitimate, uh, legitimize. I can't say. It. And did her, did her mother surrender her rights in in that same court case? Yes, sir. Did you, did did Amani's mother ever have any relationship with her, other than giving birth to her? Um, I said at one time we were staying together, but after that, it was more like uh, her using the key as a pawn. All right. Um, do you know whether or not I, during the time after you uh, got sole custody, did you ever give her mother any visitation, or did Amani ever go see her mother? Um, once I did that, uh, the location that she was living at, um, the number that she gave me, she was gone, and I didn't have no way of getting in touch with her. Okay. So is it fair to say that for a number of years prior to 2013, Amani had no contact with her birth mother. True. And so as a result of that, did you feel free to engage in a uh, start a relationship with the defendant? Yes. Um, you weren't tied down or living with anybody or anything like that, were you? No, I was just um, rooming with uh, Rudy Kirkland. And who's Rudy Kirkland? Um, he's a friend and, and someone I call and consider a cousin. Um, but he's not related to you by blood. Is not by blood. Did y'all grow up together, you and Rudy? Yeah. And is he someone that you confide in? Yes, sir. Um, is he someone that you trust? Yeah. And how long have y'all been friends? Um, since I was about when I met him, about 13. About 13 when I met him. Okay. So... Damn. Tell the jury about after you had the you had this casual acquaintance relationship with the defendant. Mm -hmm. um, I think you said that you would go out to dinner with with a groups of people from the church. That is correct. At some point, did that relationship move from casual to something more serious? Um, that was later on. About how long? Um, I want to say two thousand and nine. Uh, uh, I'd say late 2008, no lie. I'm not really trying to get the dates, but I know that's about around that time frame. So would it be fair to say it was approximately two years? Yeah. And during the two-year period between 2007 and 2009, did the defendant ever meet your daughter, Imani? Yes, all the time. And did, did she and Imani seem to get along? Yes, from the, um, from the moment at church, yeah. Was there any problem? Did she seem to express any problems seeing you in a romantic way because of the fact that you had a child? No, I don't think so. And did she ever express any concerns about getting into a relationship with you that you ha because you had a child? No, sir. And so you said in 2009 things started to get a little more serious. Yes, Tell sir. us about 
what you mean by that and how the relationship progressed. Um, 2009, um, you know, we uh, it started out with a date. I received a phone call, and, you know, she asked me out on a date. Okay. And we went from a date and went on a couple of dates and went on a couple of dates, and then we uh, ended up getting real serious. Okay. And by real committed, serious? A committed relationship. So you decided... A girlfriend, you had, boyfriend, I'm yeah. I'm sorry. You, how did you make that decision? How did you make that decision to be committed? Did you just tell each other, or...? Yeah. And, and so did the, the committed relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend, I think you used the words. Yes, sir. Did that progress on, along? Um, for a while. And uh, then um, during 2009, I know I proposed. So we were dating 2009. I want to say we were dating about seven, maybe eight months. Maybe eight or nine. I can't remember from the time frame, but I know it's around that before I propose. So in 2009, you were ready. To, you were ready to pull the trigger. You were ready for marriage. Yeah. And did the defendant accept your proposal? Yes, sir. When were you married? Um, uh, July 2009. And where did that happen? Happened at Freedom Christian Church. So. Why, did, did you move in together before you were married or after you got married? After we got married. And where did you first live when you were first married? Um, when we were first married, first we were living where I was currently, you know, rooming with Ruby Kirkland. I can't really remember the address. I know it's in Lawrenceville. Okay. That that's, good enough. that's good okay. enough. You don't need the specific. So it was, it, was it you, Tiffany, Amani, and Rudy? Yes, right. and his daughter. So how long did that last, do you think? Um, then what's the name? 2010, uh, Triple Cove, uh, 2995 Triple Cove at the house when we moved under, you know, when I was rooming with Rudy. Okay. We got our own place. When you had your own place, were you, were you working at that time? Yes. Where were you working? Um, at that time, I was working at a company, um, you know, it changed the name, it was KGP, but at that time, the name was Embark Logistics. And what type of work did you do? Um, warehousing, All right. forklift driver. At the time you moved into your own house, back in 2010, what type of schedule did you work? Um, at that time, I was working a day shift right. from uh, 6.30 to 3.30. Okay. And was Amani going to school? Yes, sir. And was Tiffany working? Yes, yeah, she was a, a, a pre-K teacher. Um, are you aware whether or not Tiffany has a college degree? Um, yeah, I, she told me she had a college degree. And was, was working as the pre-K teacher part of what she had gotten her degree in? I think so. And... So, and, and Imani was living with you. Yes. So while you were in that house in 2010, how were, how were things between you? It was good. I guess the honeymoon phase. All right. Did you, did you feel like you had enough money and, and uh, with your incomes and, and that things were pretty good? Yeah, it was easy. And so what happened then? When did you move out of that house? Um, and I'm moving out of that house, I want to say November, or was it 2000, I think it was, it was 2011, I think, I'm not for sure, I don't want to, 10 or 11. Okay. Um, and why did, where did you move to? Um, I moved with my mother-in-law. Okay. Why did y'all move to your mother-in-law's house? Um, money got tight. Money got tight. And why did money get tight? At that time, I was the only one working. Okay. And well, why were why wasn't Tiffany working? Um, she ended up losing her job. Um, at some point, either when you lived with your mother-in-law or at the at the house mm -hmm. in 2011, did Tiffany get pregnant? Yes. And did she eventually give birth to your son, Tristan? That's correct. 
during the time she was either pregnant or when she at, right after she gave birth, did she work at all? Um, no. And with her not working, what did you feel like her responsibility within the couple was? Stay home mom. Well. And did you feel like it was her responsibility to take care of the children? Yes, sir. And, and who, what were the children that were living with you at that point? At that time, uh, um, in 2010, it was uh, Trishna, my son, and uh, Imani. And you were living at, at your mother-in-law's house? Yes. Is that Pearlie Bashir? Yes. How long did you live at, at Ms. Bashir's house? From that time frame, from my, to the end of 2010 to, I want to say the summer of 2011, we stayed, that's about, I say we moved out 2010, November from Triple Co, and then we ended up moving with um, my mother-in-law in 2011, I think we left that summer, I want to say June, okay. when I signed another lease at another place. Uh, you, I, I think you just said you signed a lease at another place. Was yeah, that apartment. A, a apartment. Apartment, yes, sir. And where was that apartment located? Uh, Club Drive. So when you got to Club Drive, who was in the house with you? Who lived at, who lived at that apartment? Uh, it was me, Tiffany, uh, Imani, and uh, Tristan. Why did you move out of Pearlie's house? Um, it was really tight at that time. Tight? As far as room. room. Okay. So there's a, there were a bunch of people in the house. Yes. Who was living in the house that first time you moved in with Pearlie? Um, it was me, Tiffany, Tristan, Imani, and her mother. During that period of time, how was Imani's health? It was good then. Did she ever exhibit any signs of, of not wanting to eat or an eating disorder or anything along those lines? No, sir. Was she an active child? Yes, sir. Um, did she do okay in school? Yes, sir. When you moved into the club drive, the club drive apartment, was she still in school? Yes. And were you still working the day shift? Yes. Uh, what had happened that made you? Well, I, I understand the room, but. Obviously, then, the, the club drive situation, was money tight then? Yes, it was still kind of tight. Um, did you feel like you could make it on what you, were, what you were earning? Yes. So how long did that last at club drive? Uh, until my lease was up, and I ended up having to move back uh, with the mother-in-law. Why? Um, Tiffany had got pregnant again. And who... And was that with your child, with your daughter, Emma? Yes, sir. So when did you find out that Tiffany was pregnant with Emma? Um, I'm trying. I can't really remember. I just know she said she was pregnant. Right. And um, let me state this. Um, I know in the first pregnancy it was hard. She was like on bed rest. So I'm, I'm really predicting as soon as she's going to be on bed rest with Emma also. So when your lease expired in, at Club Drive, you moved back into Ms. Bashir's house, right? Yes. How long did you stay there? Um, I ended up staying there until 2013, uh, I want to say September. And then where did you go in September of 2013? Um, uh, I think Veranda Chase Drive, I think that's the address. I can't remember the number, but I know it was in Lawrenceville's apartment. And is that the apartment where you were taken into custody? Yes, sir. Right. I want to go back to 2010. Um, do you recall where you were interviewed by the Gwinnett County Police Department in regard to an issue with Imani? Yes. Tell the jury how that, how you found out about that and how that happened. Um, I was at work, and um, I get a phone call from, a, I think, a detective. I can't remember her name, but I know I got a phone call from a detective saying I had to come to the police station. They didn't tell me what. They just said I didn't need an emergency, 
I think it pertained, it said pertaining to your child. So I just left work, let my manager know, and I just hopped in the car and just drove all the way down there. Right. While you were at the police department, did you find out that your wife had been accused of, of beating your child? Yes, when I got down there. Right. And did you give a statement to the police in that regard? Uh, yes, I spoke with the uh, detective. And did you become aware that she was eventually arrested? Yes, uh, she got arrested there. And do you know whatever happened with that case? Um, she took the plea of probation, five years to my knowledge. Tell me what life was like after that at your house. <laughs> it was rough. Um, was Tiffany allowed to work as a teacher after that? No. Did Tiffany ever work after 2010? No. Um, so it sh it sh what did she do? Stayed at the house. Stayed, stayed at up. Early's house? Yeah. It, it, wherever we were living, she stayed at the house. Right. Did you feel like her, her job at that point was to take care of the kids? Yes. Um, at, during the time you were at Pearlie's house, did you ever see any issues with Amani in terms of her weight or? No. Um, did you ever see any problems between Amani and Tiffany while you were at Pearlie's? Yes. Tell me about those. Um, ever since the, going back to 2010, ever since then, it was like a, like a love-hate relationship. Tell me, what, explain to the jury what you mean by a love-hate relationship. Um, you know, her and Monty was like, um, it was always something. They couldn't get along. Did you ever know of Tiffany from 2010, after 2010, to discipline Amani? No, not to the incident. All right. I, I want to ask you, when, when I say discipline... Okay. What a discipline a child, what does that mean to you? At that time, uh, spanking. But are there other ways to discipline children? Yes. Uh, is sending to bed without their supper a way of disciplining a child? No, it's not. Um, is putting them in a corner and putting them in time out a discipline for a child? Yes. So you said that when you said that that... You said that Tiffany didn't didn't discipline Amani. Are you aware of whether or not she used any of the other things other than a spanking to correct her behavior? Yes, she used, um, after we, well, let me go back. When we had the incident where she spanked Imani in 2010, we had to take a class, I took a, it called the Fatherhood Program, and I think she had to take anger management, and then we had in-home counseling. Because at the time, I was not aware of the other form of discipline, because, you know, I grew up from the old school. You know, you got a spanking, and that was it. So you learned about other forms yes. of discipline. But at the time, I didn't know, but, you know, spanking. And So did after 2010, did you decide that you were going to use the other forms of discipline other than spanking? Yes, and do you know whether or not Tiffany did that too? Yes, best of my knowledge, I think she did. Right. While, and so you moved in in the sun. In, did you say in September of 2013? Yeah. To the apartment. Yes, sir. Um, where did you live? Did you ever live with your mother? Um, yes, that was. Um, you talking about me and Tiffany, or just you and Tiffany and the no. children? No, sir. Not, the three of you didn't live there? No. Did Amani ever live with your mother? Yes, during the uh, incident in 2010. And after that, was was Amani placed with your mother? No, sir. Well, how did she end up over there, then? You said at my mom's house? Yeah. How did, how did, I, I mean, okay, how did you get in 2010? Um, we had the spanking incident. Tiffany uh, spanked Amani. She had uh, whips and stuff all on her arms and back. They legs, a belt whip. Okay. But how did, uh, the question was, how did, she, how did she end up staying at your mother's house after? Um, defects. 
removed it out, the, out of our home and put it with grandma. And how long did she live with grandma after the 2010 incident? I want to say about, I want to say six months. Did you or Tiffany ever try to, did you go to court to get her back or did you, or were you just allowed to by defect? No, I had to go, um, it was uh, required for me to, you know, well, it was required for Tiffany to take any management and in-home counseling. The other program was um, volunteer. I didn't have to do it, I just did it. The, the one that you talked yeah. about, the yeah. dad's class, yeah. right? And so after you completed that, were you allowed to get Amani back? Yeah, after several supervised visits. Um, did you ever talk to your mom about Imani staying with her? Yes, I have. And wh how did you feel about that? Um, I didn't really mind. Right. But, but I'm talking about after 2010, um, did your mom ever ask for Imani to come and live with her? Yes, yeah. And what did you say to that? Um, I, I, in my pride, I said I was trying to prove something to my mom that I can do it, and I said no. And so you got Amani back when? Um, I got it back in 2010. All right. And so did she move with you from Pearlie's house to the Veranda Chase apartment? Yes. At the apartment, did she have her own room? Yes, she did. Now, tell me about your work situation when you moved into the veranda apartment. What were you doing? I mean... Um, when I moved to veranda chase, the only way I had to do it, I ended up getting two jobs. Okay. Tell the jury about your about the jobs. Um, first job was uh, KGP Logistics Warehouse. I was forklift operator. And um, Rudy Kirkland um, uh, introduced me to one of his friends, and I ended up working at Avery Express. It's a forklift driving thing, also open dock. Right. Tell, me, tell the jury what your schedule was while you lived at the Veranda Chase apartment. Um, on typical Monday to Friday, um, from 6.30 at first job, KGP, 6.30 to 3.30. Um, Able to express, it's a little bit different. It starts at 6, and it depends on if you finish up the work in order for you to go home. So I say average, probably 1 or one thirty, sometimes 2. In the morning? In the morning. Um, how long did it take you to get to your job? Um, it was right off of Old North, uh, I think, yeah, Old North Cross Road. So it was about, I want to say, 15 minutes. So what time did you have to leave your house in the morning to get to your first job? First job, because it was on the other side of Swanee, I would have to leave, to be on there, to be on time, I'd say 5 in the morning, just to be on time because it'd be traffic. And what time would you get home from your first job? Uh, I want to say a little bit, probably with traffic at the end, I'd say about 4.30, almost 5. And then what time would you have to leave for your second job? About 5.30, because I had to be there at 6. And then what time would you get home at night? Anywhere from 1 to 1.30. And then what did you do from 1.30 to 5.30? I would try to go get some sleep and get up and do it again. And when did you, did you start the second job about the time that you moved into the apartment? I started the second job before I got the apartment. Because I couldn't do it um, with my income because um, how them apartments, or most apartments, is you have to make three times the rent. And if I uh, try to get it with the one job, I wasn't able to make three times the rent. So is it fair to say you were at your house about three hours a day during the waking hours? Yes. And was that Monday through Friday? Yes, sir. What would you do on the weekends? Weekend, I wasn't doing much at that time. I'd be in the uh, house with the kids. What was Tiffany doing on the weekend? Um, weekend was like an uh, outlet for her to get a break. Would she go out with her friends? Yeah, or she might be over there with her mother uh, or her sister. And and that was that okay with you at that point? Yeah. During the times, particularly after you moved into the apartment, 
during the times that you were at work, would you ever get communications from, well, first of all, were you allowed to get cell phone calls or telephone calls while you were at work? Oh, I was not allowed to have my cell phone, but I, you know, I had it with me anyway. Would you get calls from Tiffany during the day? Yes. Um, did they ever talk about Amani? A lot of time they were text messages. And what was she, what were the types of text messages you would get? Um, um one incident said Imani um boo boo and put it on the wall. Uh, got another that got another call, tell me that Imani um boo again and put it in the oatmeal in the food. Get, I get I'm just going down the list uh, different things or he might have tried to run away would it be fair to say that a lot of the text that you got had to do with <coughs> Tiffany claiming that Monty, uh, Monty was was misbehaving yes um, so you're her father what did you do about that <sighs> I didn't do absolutely nothing did you believe your wife when she told you that I did. Why? I don't know. I had questions, but I did. Um, did you ever seek out more family counseling for your child? I didn't. Did you I, ever take her to a doctor to see if she was sick? I did one time. It was in, um, we were staying with uh, my mother-in-law, but I didn't stick to the appointment. So you really didn't did take her to the I point. didn't really. I went to one thing. Um, and when you say that Tiffany was telling you that Amani boo-booed, that means she went to the bathroom, right? Yes, feces defecated. And did you ever see evidence of feces on the wall of your apartment? No, I didn't. Um, did you ever see a bowl with oatmeal and feces in it in the sink? No. Um... Let's go to, to the week, approximately the week of October the 24th of 2013. Um, at that point, had you noticed that Imani was sick? Yes. Tell me what, tell me what you mean, what I mean by okay. sick or what you mean by sick. Well, we um, moved to Verena Chase. We were saying with me, she had had a growth spurt, but she was thin, but she started to get thinner when we moved to uh, Veranda Chase. Whose responsibility did you feel at that point was to feed your child? Um, during the weekday, uh, Tiffany, and mostly on the weekend, it was me. Right. And on the weekends when you were with Amani, did she eat? Yes, she would, she would try to eat a lot. Actually, on the weekends, she would, like, try to gouge. Do you mean gorge? Yeah, yeah gorge. I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> I don't mean to correct you. Okay. I don't want to change your words, but okay. that sounds like what you meant to say. Um, and that was during, the basically, the summer of 2013, right? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, almost going into the fall, September. You moved into the apartment yeah, in September. In September. So it would have been in the fall of 2013, right? Yeah. Um, did Imani get thinner? Yes. And did she did she seem like she had uh, lost her ability to to be active? Yes. Now, during the time you lived at Veranda Chase, did you and Tiffany have date night, or did you go out? No, not really. And did you ever take your two younger kids out of the apartment? Well, I didn't. What, and who did, did anyone take uh, kids out? Yeah, they usually go over there. I know the other two would go over there on um, grandma house. And and while the other two were, when you say grandma, do you mean Pearly? Yeah. What was Tiffany's relationship with your mom? It wasn't a good relationship. Did they ever go and see your mom, who's her other grandmother? Um, 
Very, very, I think the last time they saw Emma, matter of fact, they came over when we were living with um, my mother-in-law. My mother came to see uh, Emma. When she was born? Yeah, and uh, bought Tristan a birthday present. Did you see... Did you see your mom on Mother's Day of 2013? No, I did not see. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, do you do you remember? Do you remember your mom talking to you about about Amani then? Yes, she did. And what did she ask you? She asked me. She said she's dead and she need to come stay with me. And what did you what did you answer? In my pride, trying to prove my mother wrong, I said no. Deep down in the heart, I felt like it was probably the best place, but I didn't do it. At Mother's Day of 2013, had Imani's hair changed? Yes, she had an incident. She had, um, well, I didn't see it, but, uh, you know, we were told that she had cut, you know, cut her hair with some scissors. Who told you that? Tiffany. Um, did you ever ask Imani how her hair got cut? Shh. <sighs> She, she never go with details. She just said, I, yeah, I did it. She never said why she did it. She said, I did it. Every time I asked her, like, she told me we did this, and the money said, yeah, I did it. And, I mean, did she seem angry or defiant? Uh-uh. So, at that point, did you believe her? Kind of did, and I kind of didn't. Did you hear, did you happen to hear... Tiffany, make a statement to your mom about your daughter's hair? Um, I don't think I heard. No, I, didn't, I, I think I got a phone call, but I didn't hear the statement. Now, when you say a phone call... It, it's like later after you're talking about Mother's Day, right? Right. Yeah, I had got a... I didn't hear it. I didn't hear the statement, but it, it was uh, said to me when, you know, after I left, I got a phone call from my sister. And she, was your sister very happy when she called you? No. Um, let's go back, um, starting in, in October the 24th of 2013. Did you work that day? Yes, I did. Did you work your first job? Yes, both jobs. When you got home from your first job, did you see Imani on that day? Um, on the 24th? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Where was she? She was in a she was in a bedroom, laid out um, deceased. I wanna I wanna make sure because in one of your prior statements you said that on the twenty fourth mm-hmm. that you found her in a bathtub. Does that help? Rec- okay, okay. Rec- I'm going back. I'm thinking about twenty fourth. Right. On the twenty fourth. Was there an occasion where you came home and Amani was in a bathtub? Yes. That was um, that, that day I went to work at the first job, which is KGB Logistics. I was having car trouble with the um, Chevy Trailblazer. Uh, I think it was a water hose or whatnot. And uh, I kept running hot. So coming home, I thought I had it fixed because, you know, I came out. They said, your, your antifreeze is all on the... Um, ground, so I had to put water in there. I come home, then I, I'm trying to work on it, and then I go over and drive it to uh, Avery Express, and I get it, start running hot as I pull into the driveway, and I went and talked to the manager. He said, you going, if you, you can't get home, you're going to fix that, and you, we just give you the day off. We got somebody to fill in. So I take the car back. I know I'm talking a long way. I take the no, car no, back. Take I take the car back. Um, It took me a while to get home because I had to keep stopping, getting water, stopping, getting water because it kept running hot and cut off, cooled off. Finally get to the house, but I never went in. I just called and said, I'm down here trying to work on the car. I got to fix it. If I can't fix it, I can't get to work. If I can't get to work, I can't provide. Who did you call to say all that? Um, Tiffany. She was in the house. So you didn't go to the house when you you left your first job? You didn't go into the apartment. Yeah, I did. I ran in. Didn't, I didn't have no time to get a nap or anything. I just ran in and changed because I had to wear a different uniform. Couldn't wear the uh, other clothes that I wear at the first job. I had to actually put on a uniform. So I put on the uniform, 
get in the car, try to run and make it to Avery, and I get there, and I wasn't able to stay because the car was messing up, and the manager told me to just go back to the house. I go back to the house. I'm trying to fix the, uh, the water hole. I'm down there. I end up staying down there until it got dark. I want to say it had to be late. I want to say about 10, 30, maybe 11 o'clock. So when you went back into your apartment, is that when you found Amani in the bathtub? Yeah, I had went in there. I know I, she, I, she was giving me pictures. She sent me a picture. Take, she said she done feed the kids, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany was in. And, and in, in those pictures, she said that she was that she fed the kids. Yeah, on the phone, she said, I have fed all the kids. So I'm at that point, when I'm coming to the house, I think they all asleep. I come in, I go to the, uh, I think, the little laundry room, put my toolbox in. I go um, to the kitchen, um, said something about a new dish that she made. Go look in the refrigerator. I come out the kitchen, and uh, Tiffany tells me to come here, and she says, something wrong with your money. I leave there. I go into the bathroom. She's in the tub, and um, she's shaking like she's having a seizure. So what did you do? Um, I didn't go with my first mind. I, I said we need to go take her to 911 or take her to the hospital. Did Tiffany have anything to say about when you said that? Say we can't. Did she explain to you why you couldn't take your daughter to the hospital? She was real, real thin. Yeah, but did Tiffany, had, Tiff, uh, did Tiffany tell you why you couldn't take your daughter to the hospital? No, she didn't give me why. Now, let's stop there and go back four or five, uh, four or five days into October. At some point, did you come home and discover Amani had been burned? Yes. Tell me, about, tell the jury about that. Um, matter of fact, I get a, I think I got a phone call at work. Um, said uh, or was it a text me? I think it was either one of them. But I, I got a phone call. I think I got a text too that she had. Uh, she was say she was cooking something with a pot and she spilled the water on the stomach. That Imani was cooking. Imani, yeah. Cooking. Tiffany said Imani was cooking. And that she spilled a pot. Yeah. Um, did Tiffany tell you what was in the pot? Um, no, it said hot water. So you went when you went home. Did you take? Did you look at your daughter and? and yeah. What did you see? Uh, she was, had a skull on the stomach, like a uh, round little skull part on the stomach. And. And on her. Did you say we ought to take her to the doctor? Yeah, but we didn't. I didn't do it. So on the 24th, you found her in the bed, in the bathtub, and did it look to you like Amani was having a seizure? Um, that's my knowledge. Yes, I know I, you're not a doctor, yeah. but what did she look like? She was, uh, she was, she was sh shaking, like you know. Could she speak? Uh, she was trying to say something. She wasn't speaking much. She was, you know. Were, were her eyes moving at all? They, they were going uh, from left to right. So after Tiffany said we can't call the doctor, we can't take her to the hospital, what'd you do with her? <sighs> Kept her in the room. In which room? In her room. I mean, did you put her on the floor or where did you put her? Um, on a mat on a mattress and um and on the floor. Um Mom, did she ever get up out of that bed? No, she didn't after the seizure thing. No, she didn't. Did you go in and check on her in, in the days that follow? Yes. Um, I was trying to... Uh, excuse me, sorry. Yes, I did. And um, I was trying to... Uh, Feed her through a star, uh, uh, feed her <laughs> through a spoon with infamil. Okay. Huh. What were you trying to feed her? Infamil, like a, like a liquid diet, but it wasn't working. What do you mean it wasn't working? It wasn't working. Well, I mean, 
did she spit it back up or did she not be able to swallow it or did it spill on the bed? And when you say not working. Uh, what I'm talking about, I'm um, talking about her weight. Okay. As far as, you know, she was swallowed, but it wasn't, you know, as far as what I'm saying, it was beyond repair. Um, at that time, was she able to get up herself and go to the bathroom? No, sir. Um, was she going to the bathroom in the bed? Yes, sir. Um, did you ever see any any uh, sores or, or anything like that on her? Like bed sores or just sores? Just bed? sores around her bottom or sores uh, from laying in the bed, anything like that? Uh, she had, she had far the scar, uh, um, where she got scarred at, it was, um, healing around her stomach. Okay. Far that, the scab. Could she talk to you at that point? She wasn't talking. Um, um, would you agree that she was in pretty bad shape at that time? She was in bad, she was in a bad state. Amon, did you take her to the doctor then? I did not take her to the doctor, sir. Why not? Uh, I really can't explain it. I, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to fix something. Like I said, you know, I'm not God, but I, I'm trying to fix something irre irre irreversible or beyond repair. What right. I should have did. Oh, go ahead. I, I, no, go ahead. Finish your sentence. I'm sorry, what I interrupted. I, what I should have did was when I said when the incident happened, to call 911. And when I didn't, it was I put myself in a bad bind. Sir. What was Tiffany telling you about what you needed to do at that point? Um, she was saying that we can't go, we can't call 911, we can't do that. Um, we got to hide the body. Well, what she um, tell, why, did she, why did she tell you that we can't call 911? I mean, you're this child's father. Um... Cause she said, uh, I'm on probation, I don't wanna go to jail. Uh, Did she say anything about losing your other children? Yes. I wanna go now, so from the, tw the 24th, you put, her, you put Imani in bed. Yeah. On the 28th of October, of 2013, did Tiffany notify you somehow that Amani had died? Uh, yes, yeah, she called me at work. That was that. Was that the? Do you remember? Was it the 28th or the 29th? Uh, that day, I'm trying to uh, judge the week. Think about the it first. in terms. Of, okay, was it fun. one or two? Was it? Two or three days before Halloween. Might have been a day before Halloween, or if not Halloween, I'm trying to think before Halloween. And how did how did you get the notification that Amani had died? It was on a Tuesday, I know, but when um, it was uh, through a phone call. Right. Where were you when you got the phone call? I was at work. You... And did you actually speak to Tiffany, or did you just get a text? Um. Uh, I think I talked to her on the phone. And what did she tell you? Uh, she said uh, she's gone. She didn't say it too much. She said she's gone. So when I came home... Wait, wait a minute. Oh, when you okay, came okay. home, did okay. you leave work? I did not leave work. I couldn't leave work. I left work after I got out. I tried to leave early, but she didn't let me get a half day. So I actually left work on a regular time. At 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the afternoon? Yes, sir. And what did you do when you got home? Um, at this point, I'm devastated. I'm really messed up, uh, honestly. I go in the room, and from that time, you know, I usually take a nap. I was in the room with um with a Imani body until about time to go back, go to work to Avery. All right. Let me ask you: Did you do anything to confirm that she had died? She was dead. How could you tell? I've been in a lot of funerals, and I, I can tell, you know, she was cold. Her essence was there. Um, her eyes, she was gone. 
Where was Tiffany when you came in the house? When I walked in, um, the other two kids, I mean, Tristan was running around playing. He came in. Um, I'm really messed up at the time. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I walked past him. And we in the pack and play, and she was watching TV. Did you have any conversation with her when you, when you walked by her watching TV? No, not at that moment. <clears throat> and after you went into the room and saw that Imani was dead, did you go out and talk to Tiffany? <sighs> yes, that was, uh, that was after. You talking about after I came from in there? Yeah. Yeah. What did, you, what did y'all talk about? Talking about concealing her death, um, making it like since she had a history of running away, make it seem like she ran away. But Amon, let me let me ask okay. you: When you discovered your daughter dead, what did you want to do? Nine one one. What did Tiffany want to do? She wanted to hide it. Um. There's a question that has to be asked. Why did you agree to that? I was trying to, uh, it don't make any sense. I guess out of love, I was trying to fix the problem that I couldn't fix. I was trying to save her, but I couldn't save her. I couldn't save my daughter. I can't explain it. Were you afraid of losing your other kid? That too. Um, so Tiffany came up with a plan that you had to hide the body. Did you go to work for your second job that day? Yes, I did. And when you got off the work of the second day, the second job, what did you do? Um, at the second job, at Avery, I went back. I went. I went back home, and. Then, you know, you probably can ask the you know, manager. I was out of it as far as, you know, sleep. I just went myself. And um, you talking about the day that we... Um, the day you learned that Imani was dead, the day that you... I went, I went both, dead. yeah. What did you do after you went to your second shift, your second job? Um, I went to work. Worked that shift. Um, almost had an incident. Um, I almost ran the forklift off the, it's an open dock. I almost ran it, ran it off the dock. Okay. And Wait, I, go ahead. When you got, but what I want to focus on is okay. when you got home from your job. I, I understand okay. you were, yeah. you were upset, mm-hmm. but when you got home from your job, let me ask you, was, was Imani still in the bed? Uh, when you got home. No, she was on. A, she was um, laying on a blanket on the floor when I. You were talking about when I came home from my first job, right? Well, I, I went you in the didn't tell me. Okay. So when you came home from your first job, where yeah. I think okay. you earlier testified that that you went in and checked on her. I don't think yeah. I asked you where okay, she okay. was. Where was she? Right. She was on the floor um, on a blanket, and and you asked me uh, um, how did I know she was dead? I was saying she was cold. And then no movement in the eyes. She was lifeless. All right. So when you got home from your second job, where was Amani then? Um, she actually was still in the room on the blanket that the door was closed. And where was Tiffany? Um, when I came home for the night, she was in the bed in the uh, back room sleep, and the other kids were sleeping in that room when I came home from the night job. So that night... Did you move Amani from the floor of her bedroom? Um, or did you just leave her there? Well, that night, I actually left. I, I left her in there for, I think, one more day. Then I moved her uh, to the little computer in the way the apartment is set up. It's a uh, computer room. All right. Was that the next day? Yes, sir. So w- when you got home and saw her on the floor, and Tiffany was asleep in the bed. Did you, did you go to bed that night? Yeah, but uh, the, the thing is, I don't know if I said I stated this, uh, when I came home late, see, I wasn't sleeping in the room with Tiffany, so I usually sleep on the couch or make me a pile on the floor in the living room. 
during that time. So, you know, I went in the room that night. I was in there for a while again with the money, and then I stepped out. I laid down, went, you know, laid down my normal thing I do at nighttime on the couch and got up and did the normal routine of going to work. So you went to work the day after you found your daughter dead and you went to the yeah. uh, first job? Yes. And did you come home that, that day from your first job? Yes. And was, was Amani still in her room when you got home that afternoon? Yes, until I moved. Okay, so tell me what you did with her when you got home from your first job the day after she had died. I moved her to the computer room. Did you? Wrapped up in the blanket. You wrapped her up in the blanket? Yeah. And did you go to your second job that, that day? Yes, sir. When you got home from your second job on the day after your daughter died, so it's what, one or two in the morning? Yes, sir. What did you do that 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 evening or, or that morning? Um, talking about Friday, well, like, yeah, Friday evening. Friday. Took, oh, well, let's oh, not worry about okay. days or okay. dates too much. Let's just sort of work it one day at a time. Okay. So it's the day after your daughter died, you said you went to work. Yes, sir. I went to both jobs. And, and that during that time is when you moved her into the computer room. Yes, sir. And then you went to your second job. Yes, sir. What did you What did you do after you got home from your second job? Um, I, every time I got from the second job, I'd go back in the where I moved in the computer room. I'd go in there, and I was going there with the body. And what were you doing? Um, I was in there grieving. During, the, during that day, did you have any conversations with Tiffany about what, what y'all needed to do? I mean, you got a dead body of a child in, a, in your apartment. Um, I mean, you, what are y'all going to do? That, that happened the day of, you know, the day of when you said, um, we, we can't do this, we got to hide it. You know, we got to hide it and be on some uh, criminal mind type stuff. Um, did Tiffany like to watch real court TV shows and... Yeah. Crime shows? Crime shows. And so she actually said to you that we have to we have to be yeah. on our criminal mind? Yes. So we're back the day after mm -hmm. Amani died. You came home from your second job. You spent time with her in the computer room. Mm -hmm. Did you sleep that night? Not really. And did you get up the next morning? And go back to work. And go back to work? Yes, I did. And you worked a regular shift? Yes, I did. Um, so by this time, we're somewhere around October the, uh, excuse me, October the 30th. Yeah. When do you, at that, during that period of time, was Tiffany asking you about about what are we going to do with this body? Uh, he wanted to, um, you know, get rid of like bury it. Right. So on on October the thirtieth, mm -hmm. did you after after did you go to your second job? Yes, I did. And after you left your second job, did you go to a Walmart? Yes, I did. What did you buy at the Walmart? Um, I bought, best of my recollection, um, I bought a, a bag of charcoal, a tin trash can, um, box of lawn, a garbage bag, I think lawn garbage bag. Um, about to what time of the day or night was that? Do you it was, this was late at night because uh, I think Walmart was 24 hours. Um, I can't remember the time. I know it was late at night. Um, it's late at night, and you're at a Walmart, and you buy a trash can, and you buy a lawn bags, and you buy charcoal briquettes. Yes. Why would you buy those? Um... To, to try to uh, uh, 
call myself trying to create cremate the body and you can't cremate the body. I didn't know that then. Whose idea was it to cremate the body? Um, I think it was, uh, I think she just wanted to bury the body. I, I didn't want to bury the body. So I guess it was my idea to try to cremate. Hang on one second. Okay. Yarn, may I approach the witness? You may. Mr. Moss, I'm going to show you some items that have been previously marked. The first being State's Exhibit Number 4. Can you look at that and identify it, and more particularly, identify the person that appears? That is me. Is that a photograph with, that contains your image? Yes. I'd also like to show you State's Exhibit Number 5. <coughs> Can you look at that and tell what that is, and more particularly, the person that's in that photograph? That's me. State's Exhibit Number 6. Can you look at that and identify it, and uh, particularly the person that's in that photograph? That's me. State's Exhibit number seven is a photograph. Can you describe that and, and the person that's in it? Oh, that's me again. And finally, State's Exhibit number eight, can you take a look at that and tell us who that person is? That's me again. <coughs> now, how, do you, how do you know it's you? How, how do you recognize yourself in this? I see the hat, and uh, that's my face. Um, I had a jacket like that. The, um, uh, I think it's an echo. I'm going to okay. show these to the defendant, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. Right. Okay. Um, you've, you've, I, Your Honor, um, at this time we, we would, we would tender State's Exhibit Number 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, we intend to, to tie up the chain of custody. These are identified as Walmart security photos, and we intend to bring in the original disc and have them brought in as, as part of a business record with one of our next witnesses, but uh, we would move for preliminary admission so that I can go into the con contents of them. Any objection? No, no. States 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are each admitted without objection. And Your Honor, may I approach the witness again? You may. Mr. Moss, I particularly <coughs> want to show you States Exhibit Number 7. Can you describe what's in this to the jury, and then what are you doing there? Can you tell from that photograph? Um, um, looking like, um, at that moment, looked like that, probably lifting up the trash can. I guess it had a skew or a skin on the bottom of it. And I think I'm lifting it up so she can scan it. 
So are you paying for the items at the Walmart? In other words, are you checking out? Yeah, I'm checking out. And do you have the lid to the trash can in your hand? Yes. And the, the actual can is in your other hand? Yes. One other, one other question. Each of these photographs is date stamped. Can you take a look here in the middle and, and tell the jury what the date stamp on that photograph is? 10 30, 2013. So after you left the Walmart, where did you go? Um, I went to the house. Did you leave all these items in your trailblazer? Um, I left. I left the trash can. Okay. And what did you do with the lawn bags and the charcoal um, briquettes? Uh, the lawn bags I brought back to the to the apartment. I left the charcoal back there also. Okay. And the bag of uh, I think it was a lighter, uh, you know, a big uh, candle lighter stick. Okay. I think. Um. So you took the trash bags inside the house? Yes, I did. What did you do with them? Um, I took them up. Um, at that time, I took up, and I had to get uh, Imani's body. Where was her body at that time? Um, I think I'm jumping, actually, I'm thinking I'm jumping um, from the days of that, because I didn't do that until that Friday from that day. You didn't? I, you didn't get her body. Yeah, I didn't put her body in the trash bag until that Friday morning. Okay. I'm jumping a little ahead. I just... All right. You know, I want to I try and stay on day okay. day if we can. Okay. So that was the day before Halloween. Yes. You brought the trash bags into the house. Yes. And did you go to bed that day? Um, a little bit, but I didn't get much sleep. All right. And did you get up on Halloween day mm -hmm. and go to work? Yes, I did. Um, where, did you see Imani before you left? Um, I, yeah, I always go in that room. Every time I came back, I go in that room by myself. Everybody be asleep. Where was Where was Tiffany during all this time? Um, just doing the normal routine, cooking for the kids, watching TV. During that time. Was she talking to you about what you need, what you, what you all needed to do about this? Um, I think during that time she was uh doing the day, she was uh you know Imani was doing the homeschool thing. Um, I don't know if I said anything about that, but the homeschool thing, Acad Connect Academy. Right. Uh, she would uh do her schoolwork to make it seem that Imani was you know doing the you know the schoolwork or the right. Connect thing. At any point, did, are you aware of whether or not she sent messages to Imani's teacher? I'm not aware of if she did or not. Do you know if the two little ones trick-or-treated on Halloween? Yes, they did. Um, matter of fact, I, get a, I got a picture um, of them two um, dressed up. Do you know who took them trick-or-treating? Uh, I think she went with her sister. Best of my knowledge, I think she went with her sister. And where were you when you got the picture? I was at work. All right, so Halloween night, you come home from your second job. And what do you do then? Um, I, I do the same thing that I have been doing since, since that uh, Monday, since that Tuesday. I mean, that same thing, going in there and going in the room. And... Um, um, she pushed me to, uh, you know, to, you know, get rid of the body. Um, I'm stalling because I'm, I'm not doing it. I went to the, I went to Walmart buying a thing, but I didn't go through, you know, I didn't go through it on that day. Why not? Didn't really want to do it. So on Friday after th after the day after Halloween, mm -hmm. is that the day you? finally decided something had to be done? Yeah. So was it in the morning or afternoon? It was actually, it was um, it was morning, but it was late. I want to say like late at night, type like 11 or 12 o'clock. On the day after Halloween? Yeah. But weren't you at work on that day? Yeah. So 
You wouldn't have gotten home from work at 11 o'clock, would you? No, nah, I think it was probably 12 or 1. And I know it was late. It had to be like 1 or 2. Okay. And was Tiffany still awake then? Yeah, she was awake then. Um, so when you went into the house, mm -hmm. what did you do? Um, on that day, I was trying to, uh, um, trying to get rid of the body. Um, I go to the computer room. She come in, uh, she come in to help me then. Um, I get the body, I take it back into her room. Into whose uh, room? Imani's, um, bedroom. Take the body to Imani's bedroom. Uh, I am wrapped the uh, blanket that she's wrapped in. Take her body out. Hang on a second, Imani. Okay. You got one step. Okay. Um, did you ever put duct tape on? Uh, I was about to get to that. <laughs> from that day, I was, you know, laying it out from my wrapping. So you put, a, you put a blanket over her. Yeah. What did you do? So she's already in the blanket, sir. So I'll take her to the room and, you know, and wrap her out the blanket. And, um, you know, I'm, at that time, like I said, I'm not familiar with rigor mortis, but it done set in. And it was hard to bend the body, and that's where the duct tape came in, involved in. And um, at that time, uh, Tiffany is in there in the bedroom with me, uh, helping me do this. So when you don't have to be familiar with rigor mortis. OK. Did you have to did you have to force her legs to fold? Yes, sir. And did you and Tiffany do that together? Yes, sir. Um, did you have to sort of force her arms down by her side? Yes, sir. Um, and did you and Tiffany do that together? Yes, sir. Um, it seems like it would be difficult for one person to wrap duct tape around the little girl's body. How did that happen? Uh, that is very difficult. Did Tiffany help you with that? Yes, she did. Um, Mind you, your daughter's been dead for three days now. Um, how difficult was it to get her folded up like that? Very, very much difficult. Were there sounds? Were there... Uh, kind of like, I guess, a, like cracking sound. I can't explain. I don't know what to compare it to, what I'm saying. And after you got her duct taped, together. What happened then? After that, she helped me, you know, because um, she's, she's a lot more heavier than she was before to put the, you know, put her in the uh, lawn bag. Um, where was the trash can at that point? Trash can was in the uh, vehicle, the uh, trail bag. And did, w once you got Imani into the trash bag, what did you do then? Um, from that moment, uh, um, we, you know, I tied up the bag, the trash bag that, that she was in, and then I took another bag, and she took, I think Tiffany took the blankets and stuff that she had and put them all in the other stuff. Now, the blankets came from where? The comforter. Her uh, comforter bed, her um, uh, blanket that she was wrapped into. Um, but whose bed was it? Uh, that was Imani. Was that bed um, soiled? Was it? I mean, was there? Was there? Was there? Uh, where she had gone to the bathroom in the bed? Yes. What did you do with the mattress? Um, I know uh, Tiffany said she had cleaned the mattress. Right. So you packed one garbage bag with blankets and and mm -hmm. were there clothes in it? Yes. And so you have two of these trash bags, one of them with your daughter. And what do you do then? Uh, from that, then um, I take the trash bag and then the body, and I, and I put it in the back of, of the trailblazer. Um, and later on that night, did you, did you leave the apartment complex and try and find a place? Yes. Who was with you while you were doing that? Um, my wife and my two other little kids. 
So where did you go from the apartment with the body of your daughter in the back? Um, right now, um, at, this, at that moment, I'm really out of it. I'm just driving. Um, I go to a park, I think it's in Warrenville, Bethesda Park. Whose idea was it to go to Bethesda Park? Um, I really didn't know. We were just driving. I was, she said, we got to do I didn't know where to go. I'm just driving at the time. And what's Tiffany telling you at this time? Just find a spot. At any point during this, are you thought, thinking about that I need to call police? I need to do something? Yes. But you didn't. Why? I felt like I was already messed up. So did you end up off a of Satellite Boulevard? Yeah, that was uh, before I got there. Um, I ended up driving all the way to Stone Mountain. Just, you know, just driving down um, back roads. And what were you looking for? I said I was looking for, uh, I told her I was looking for a spot, but I really saw I didn't really want to do it. But, um... I'm just saying that we just, I'm, I'm stalling, I'm just driving. And we all the way in Stone Mountain, and I, that's how I end up on satellite. So tell me where, and, and your other two kids are in the, back, in the car? They're in the back seat. So you end up off a of satellite, and where did you go there? Um, I know satellite is uh, real long. I ended up on the uh, uh, Swanee side of satellite. Um, it's a, I think a wildlife thing over there, and I ended up pulling the vehicle uh, in the wildlife and going up a little dirt road. Um, it wasn't a long trail. I ended up going into like a wooded area. What'd you do then? Um, from that point, you know, I, I cut the car off. The kids is in the back seat. She's in the passenger side. Um, I get out the car, left the lights on, cut the car off. Um, uh, I popped the trunk, uh, the trunk of the trailblazer. Um, I, I, I opened the thing. She got out the padding side. Um, I lifted the trash can out. Um, I opened the bag of I opened the bag of uh, charcoal and put it in the tin can. In the garbage. Uh, in the, yeah, the trash can, the tin can. And from that point, um, <coughs> she uh, she helped me open the bag up where, you know, with my body, you know, wrapped up in duct tape. She helped me put her um, body in the uh, tin can. Did you put her head up or head down? Uh, uh, head up. Did you have to force her into it? Uh, kind of, yeah. So not not really forced. I just had to angle. Um, I had to put her at an angle. After you put Imani in that garbage can, what did you do then? Um, I sprinkled some um, lighter fluid on you know on the body and um, on charcoal. Then what? And then uh, you know I light. I took a charcoal and I lighted it on, on fire and I dropped it in the uh, tin can. So did it start to burn? It started to flame real, uh, real big. And I, so what were you doing at that point? Um, I was, I was standing out, and you know, I was standing. And she was out there with me. I mean, did y'all say her. anything, or would you just stand and watch the fire? Um. As I did it, um, I, I couldn't, I, like, I really didn't, I turned my back, I didn't watch it, and she said, I can't watch this. And it just burned. How long did you let it burn? Um, not that long. I want to say I let it burn for about, like, maybe five minutes, and I put it out. Why? Because it wasn't, it wasn't working in the way I thought it was supposed to work. And what did you mm-hmm. think was going to happen? <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous, you know, I'm thinking it's like cremation. I don't know anything about that. So you thought that you, you were going to reduce your daughter to ashes yeah. in that trash can? it didn't work like that. Right. So you put the fire out. How'd you put, put the fire out? I smothered it. I took the, the tin can and, you know, it smothered the uh, fire. Right. 
right? So at this point, the can must be hot, right? It's, it's very hot. And did you did y'all wait for it to cool? Yeah. So how long were you there until it cooled off? Um, I want to say probably 15, maybe 30 minutes. I, I took an old, I had some old shirts back there in the truck. I took them to, you know, to lift it up and put it in there inside the uh, back seat of the uh, 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 not the Tahoe, but uh, Chevy Trailblazer. During this time, did Tiffany help you carry the can around? Um, Either out to where you set the fire or back? She had, no, she helped me uh, carry the body and put it in the uh, thing. All right. Did, did you see whether she ever touched the can? Um, no, I never seen if she touched the can or not. So you put the body of your daughter back in the trailblazer, mm -hmm. and where did y'all go? I put it back in the car. At this point, it's probably 4 o'clock in the morning. It's about the time I'm about to go to work um, for the first shift job. So I, I took it back. She wanted me to bury it. I couldn't do it, so I put it back in the thing. Back in the thing. Back, I mean, back into the um, car. Okay. Truck, I mean. So she wanted you to bury it right there where you were, and, and you put it back in the truck. And where did you go from there? From there, I took the, I had a body in the thing. I, I took her back home with the kids that was in the back seat. Took her back to the apartment. From there, I, I, I'm not sleeping. I didn't, I didn't sleep all night. It's about 4 o'clock now. I get ready to go to the first ship job. By get ready, what do you mean? I mean get dressed, get ready to go to the first ship job. I go, right now I'm, I'm all over the place, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm out of it. So I, I take the money body that's in the truck and take it with me to work at the first ship job. I mean, so you parked in a parking lot with the, do with the body of your daughter in the yeah. back of your car? Yes, I did. I was out of it, sir. And when you went to... When you went to work, did you finish that shift? Yes, I did. So when you left work that day, where did you go from there? I went to the second shift job. And before I got to the second shift job, I went, when I went to the first shift job, um, I almost, um, my supervisor, um, her name is Creola Graham, she had pulled me to the side that day, and I almost told then that, you know, what had happened. Because she said, something wrong with this, you're not, something, what's up with you? She had pulled me to the side by herself. And that time I almost, you know, said what, ha what happened at that moment, but I didn't. So I go to, go back to the house. I still got the thing. Well, well, okay. Where okay. Were, when you got back to the house after this night-long trip, mm -hmm. where was Tiffany? She was at the house. Um, did she seem upset? Did Was she just doing normal stuff? She was doing normal stuff. Was she watching television? Yeah. So you started to get ready, ready to go to work. To the second job. And what happened then? Well, I go to the second job. Um, uh, I'm really out of it. Um, I hit one of the co-workers on the Fort Uh You know, I just bumped, well, I hit him. I bumped into him because right now at that time, I'm, I'm really out of it. Like I said, I'm discombobulated, devastated, grieving, and I messed up. So at, at Avery, this is uh, at Avery, I ended up calling uh, Rudy. And uh, I, I was like, I'm about to get off. It was like, I think it was at the time I actually got off a little early. It was like, well, it was almost not really early, about 12, 50, something, almost 1 o'clock. I get off, and I asked, can you meet me? He was like, yeah, he met me at the QT. Is that near your apartment? Um, or is no, it near actually near the Avery. It was okay. a QT off, uh, I can't remember, the River Park, Riverside Park. I think that's the name of the road, Riverside Park. Tell okay. me. I, okay. I, I believe you. Okay. So you, um, and, oh, I was, you met Rudy at the Quick Trip. And because, like I said, what I, everything that I just explained and went through, 
And that was eating me at the core. So I called Rudy, and um, and he like, you, you sound weird what you talking about. Like, I just need somebody to talk to. Uh, he meet me at the QT. Uh, and he get in the car with me. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm out of it. I, I just go and tell him, I'm like, I, I got Imani. She's dead. She in the back seat. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Get me out this car. He made me stop the vehicle because I was riding around in the parking lot near the uh, QT. I think it's a Kroger's or whatnot. Okay. Oh. Mr. Mr. Boss, hang on a second. We can't. Okay. We can't talk about what Rudy told you, but I want to ask you some questions. About okay. Him, all right. Mr. Did Porter, you? We're going to need to find a spot for a morning break here pretty soon. Let me know when there's a good transition spot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I'll be done in just ten questions. I know lawyers tell you that all the time, but I, I, I promise ten. Um, did you tell your best friend Rudy, your cousin? Did yeah. you tell him? What had happened with Imani? This all this that you had just described to the jury? Yeah, not I didn't go into full detail. I just told him that she did and da da da. I did something stupid. And what did Rudy tell you to do? Call nine one one. And did you call nine one one right there from the quick trip? Yes, I, I left and got to the house to my house and called nine one one. And before uh, okay, go okay. ahead. Before you before I called nine one one, I went. I went back to the house. I told Tiffany, I'm like, man, we, this ain't right. We got to call 911. And she was like, no, 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 no. i like, we got to call 911. So did you take, so did you, what did she do? When you told her you're calling 911, what did she do? She get the kids ready. She get them dressed. She get dressed. She get in the car. Um... I think she got the trash can because the trash can wasn't in the car anymore. And she got in the car and she drove off to her mother's house. At the time, I got called 911. And what, you called 911 at that point? Yes. And then the police arrived? Yeah, right. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Moss, will you have any cross-examination questions? No, sir. All right. Sir, you can step down. <coughs> mid-morning break at this point in time. Please remember the instructions I've given you previously. Do not discuss the case with anyone. Do not allow anyone else to discuss the case with you or in your presence or hearing. Do not even discuss the case amongst yourselves. Do not attempt any independent research or investigation in any aspect of the case, and do not look at any news media coverage that might exist with respect to the case. We'll take a 10-minute break. You can go out with our bailiff. Leave your your seat, please. Our jury's out. You're welcome to be seated. We'll take a 10-minute recess. Thank you.